Hi guys, how you going? So we're back in the workshop again today, doing a bit more reorganization. Um, so I've been making um, some additions to the French cleat wall. So at the moment, what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna try and take care of uh, all my hammers. <laughs> um, again, you, you managed to quite, quite a few of them over the, over the days. Um, but um, yeah, so now I need to find a space for them. So we've got about half a dozen of them or so. Um, so this is what we're gonna do. All right, here's my collection of hammers. I'm sure there's <laughs> more, but we'll start with these first. So what we're gonna do is we'll put a, now I'm just using MDF, you can use ply, just for the scraps you got lying around. And then we'll just put this, this over here, we'll have one. So what we'll do is organize the order, and then how we're gonna lay everything out. Nice and neat and organized. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to measure down 5 mil, 50 mil. So what we're going to use that is the guide. So pretty much all the necks of the hammers just because I like, I'm a bit hanging on about stuff like this. We'll line them all up with there. Okay. So now, what are we going to do? We're going to use dowels. Okay. So let's do the first one. So line up the hammer. And these are eight mil. We want one. One there. Okay. A sacrificial piece of timber for a hole in my bench. Okay, so that's gone clean through. White sand, bit of glue, and guess what, we'll use the hammer. Again, you're not going to need too much, put some in the hole. So there we go, pop our first hammer on, perfect, <coughs> alright, so as I normally say, it's set and repeat, my next smallest one, again line up the neck of the hammer with a line, again I'm trying to get things as close as possible, just to try and maximize the space. Our first one. Perfect. Next. Now, ultimately, if you, you can use longer dowels if you like, or you can tap them back through a little bit. Whatever works. Alright, I 
last one. Okay, so with this big hammer, I'm going to actually use some longer dowels. Just because of the heavier. Perfect. Alright, so I've got everything finished up. So we'll just clean up the excess glue. And again, it's all dry clear. Just so you see that like any big dogs everywhere. Okay. So that's all complete. Got everything flush. And now what we're going to do is attach the French cloaks. So what I do is with the French cloaks, right, so these are all cut on a 45 degree angle. So this is just um, some 19 um, by 42 MDF, or if you've got big sheets of MDF or ply, I just, when I'm ripping it down, because it's I've got to set the saw up for a 45 degree cut, what I do is I just rip a whole heap of them, and then that way I've got them in my wood storage over there. <laughs> Uh, and then wherever I've come up with a new project, I'll quickly just rub them out. All right, so with this, we're gonna, and again, with this, this piece is a little bit short. It doesn't matter. I don't need it to reach the full way across. So I'm just gonna roughly center it. And again, the beauty of the French click too is that when you position it on the wall, you're not restricted to that position. So if you've stuck that on the wall there, you can move it that way or that way, and you don't have to refix stuff and re -skew your screws. All right, so we're just going to glue it and use our bread gun. So we're going to get it roughly in the middle. We shall use a little uh, Aldi's clamps. these we need to go a bit deeper we don't want them sticking out and undo the clamps no need for them now wipe off the excess glue now the thing to keep in mind too is when nailing these if you look here make sure you don't put any nails that interfere with the French cloak or else your, um, your job's not going to sit properly. Um, and see, I don't know if you can see with this one. So this particular one there is sticking out because I had to adjust the depth, whereas all the other ones are all nice, good depth. Ouch. Uh, so that's, that's sticking out. Right. No longer sticking out. <laughs> Okay. And it's important that they're all flat too because they need to be flush to the wall. Oops. All right, so that's all nice and finished. Um, again, what would have been nice, maybe before I put the dowels in, I put the nice rounded edge around the outside. Um, cool, so now that that's all done and dry, so that's all ready to be hanged now. We've got the French plate on the back. Back's all nice and smooth. That's all nice and smooth. Um, and again, like I said, I probably should have routed this out, give it a nice finish. So what we're gonna do now is get the opposing French cloaks, okay? Now this one's out of pine. And then, so what's gonna happen is, this is gonna be fixed to the wall. That's gonna lock in place, okay? And again, um, generally I always try and do them just the same size, but if you're short on space, you can just chop one here and one here but it's, it's better to have a, a, a good length because then that way, um, and I'll cut this one to size now and I'll show you what I mean. So with this one, it's cut pretty much the same size, but the beauty of it is, so this is fixed to the wall in the stationary position. So if you want to move this this way, you can. If you want to move it that way, you can. So it gives you a really good flexibility 
So, all right. So let's pop this one on the wall. So with this one, um, what I'm gonna do, because we're gonna be moving it, I'm gonna pre-drill these and make sure the holes in this are bigger than the screws so the screws don't bite into it. Um, and then we'll screw this to the wall. Now it's just important that these screws are countersunk because when you put the screws in that, they need to be flush because that edge is gonna be pushing against this edge. Okay. Okay, so I found this space here on my wall, took off a few bits, and again rearranging. So I think that'll go quite nicely there. Check the longest hammer. So it can probably come down. So I've got some French cleats below it. So it's probably looking like perfect right there. So now we know the top of this one has to be about 10 mil from the top. Locks in place, beautiful. And then like I said before, slide it this way a bit, slide it that way a bit. Okay, so that's where I want it for the moment. Actually, because of that set square, bring it there, perfect, okay. All right, so let's start organizing the hammers. I think that one was there. That one was there. So that's not right. <laughs> that was there. Then came that one. Then came the last one. All right, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. All nice and neat and organized and stable. Okay. Um, and then also if you like, to give it a bit more support, if you're concerned because of the weight of them dropping off, you can actually put a screw through here and drill that to the French cleat behind it. And then that's not going nowhere. And if you want to move it then, you just take off the top, top screws, nice and easy to get to, and then it comes off. And there's one of my other French cleat projects in the corner. Um, so you have to check out one of my videos for that one. See, comes off. Nice and easy to go back on. All right, so there's a couple of my projects. Hope you enjoyed that one. Again, you'll see me spending a bit of time reorganizing my workshop um, and putting the French cleat system to good use. So I'm gonna max it out as much as possible. I hope you like the content I'm putting together for you. Um, please, I really appreciate any feedback, any ideas, improving things or doing things better. So leave your comments below. Um, again, if you like what you see, hit the like button. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> see you guys next time. Bye. And say goodbye, Macy. Say bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good girl. <laughs>